This is the most curious forest on earth. A rainforest that is flooded every year. The upper branches of the canopy reach high above the flood, but the forest floor is drowned by 10 meters of water. Extraordinary submerged world where the rich life of the rainforest and rivers is joined together. The Amazon is the greatest river system on earth. Some of the strangest creatures in its waters are living reminders of its long and complex past. The relatives of Amazonian stingrays only live in the Pacific Ocean. And this tells us that once the mighty river flowed westwards and not eastwards into the Atlantic Ocean as it does today. The most unusual Amazonian animal, whose relatives were marine, is the river dolphin called the boto. Unlike its oceanic relatives, the boto still retains primitive dolphin features. Most conspicuously, a long slender beak, reminiscent of species now extinct. About 15 million years ago, the Andean mountains began to rise. This huge mountain range blocked the Amazon's westward flow into the Pacific Ocean. The world's largest river was then forced to reverse its direction and began to flow eastwards and into the Atlantic Ocean. Heavy seasonal rainfall over the vast catchment area causes the rivers to flood the rising waters spill over the banks and invade thousands of kilometers of the seemingly endless floodplains in the Amazonian lowlands. And it is here that the flooded forest is found. Unlike the upland rainforest, this forest is adapted to survive long periods of flooding each year. Incredibly, many of the saplings and other small trees are completely submerged for six to nine months each year. But nevertheless, they are able to stay not only alive, but also green under the water. Over 2% of the entire Amazon rainforest is invaded by the rivers each year an area nearly as large as the British Isles. This most curious of rainforests, the flooded forest, is the home of some of our planet's most beautiful and remarkable creatures. One of the least expected animals to be found swimming between the trees is a dolphin. Unlike any other dolphins, the boto is as much at home in the forest the flooded forest, that is, as in the open waters. Although the flooded forest makes up only about 2% of the total Amazonian rainforest, it is nevertheless an extremely important link in the lives of many animals. With rising water, the flooded forests are not only invaded by water, 
but also by many fish. The Amazon has the greatest variety of freshwater fish in the world. All of Europe has only about 300 species of fish, whereas the Amazon has at least 2,000. Perhaps as many as another thousand species await discovery in the giant river system. Most Amazon fish depend to some extent on the flooded forest for shelter and food. Instead of birds flying between the lower layers of the forest, fish now swim. Although boto dolphins are nearly blind, they are able to find their way through the labyrinth of forest by using a type of sonar or echolocation. The boto is unique. Unlike most other dolphins, the boto has a flexible neck and is able to sweep its head back and forth to produce a very wide sonar image of its environment. This highly sophisticated navigational skill allows it to weave in and out of the trunks and branches of the flooded forest in search of fish. The richness and diversity of the flooded forest attracts many different kinds of life. The abundance of fish provides the main food for most predators, such as the big-headed turtle. Heavily armored, these river turtles have few predators themselves. People who live along the rivers are called caboclos. These rural inhabitants are a mixture of Indian, European and African peoples. They depend on the flooded forest for much of their subsistence food and still use many of the fishing and hunting techniques learned from the native Indians. The caboclos live along the edge of the rivers and forests. Canoes are their major means of transport and rivers their highways. When flood water becomes high, caboclos can actually paddle through the canopy of the forest. It takes considerable skill to navigate through the maze of water and trees without getting lost. Parents teach their children at a very early age how to find their way in the world of the flooded forest. Only the higher canopy remains untouched by the flood waters. Here in the upper branches are some of the most unusual and secretive animals of the entire Amazon. The white-balled wakari monkey is found only in the flooded forests of the Amazon, and even here, only in a small region of it. These monkeys have evolved an amazing ability for jumping between the flooded trees. This allows them to reach a larger number of food trees in their home ranges, which otherwise would be inaccessible to them. Wakaris are found in troops made up of about 50 individuals. A wakari troop spreads out widely within its home range and splits into smaller groups of four or five individuals in a single tree. While fish swim among the lower branches of the trees, the wakaris leap about in the upper branches in search of their favorite food, fruit.
The white-balled wakari is also called the English monkey, perhaps because of its resemblance to sunburnt tourists or gin-drinking Englishmen. Perhaps the most unusual bird of the flooded forest is the huatzin. It is peculiar not only because of its appearance, but also because of its diet. Huatzins are entirely vegetarian, and one of their favorite foods is the giant arum plant. Few animals are able to digest the thick and fibrous arum leaves. After the leaves and other plant material are swallowed, they are first fermented so that they can be digested. The fermentation results in a foul smell, and it is for this reason that they are sometimes called stink birds. Watsons breed during the floods because food is abundant and surrounding water will provide additional protection for nests and young. Adult male wakaris must be one of the most striking and unusual looking monkeys in the world. As the male matures, the hair on his head recedes and his face becomes very red. This stands in striking contrast to his full coat of body hair. Wakaris appear much larger than they really are because of their thick coats. In fact, adult males are only about 40 to 50 centimeters long and weigh less than four kilograms. In contrast to the male, the female does not become so bald or red with age. She also lacks the large bulbous forehead of the male. There is a theory that the red face has evolved as a health indicator, especially for the presence of malaria. When males have malaria, their faces turn very pale. Thus, females can gauge how fit their prospective mates may be. A diseased monkey would be rejected by the female as a mate. Possibly through the sexual selection, the wakari's face has become even redder. Wakaris usually give birth to only one baby. During the first year of life, an adolescent like this one becomes virtually independent and can search for food on its own, although the mother is usually nearby. The lives of the caboclos are closely linked to the plants and animals of the flooded forest. From an early age, the children are fascinated by forest animals and keep some of them as pets. Ideally located between the river and the forest, caboclos have ready access to both fish and game. The caboclo supplement their fish and game diets with manioc, which they plant. The manioc root is grated and then roasted in an open oven to make a coarse bland flour, somewhat resembling gritty sawdust. This flour is called farinha and provides most of the starch for their diets. The rich knowledge about the plants and animals that the caboclos possess